In this next series of videos, we're going to reiterate and uh, repeat, show examples of why we did the private members, uh, private properties, and then I'm going to elaborate on this example and we're going to create what we call inheritance. And the idea is that we are going to create a, some, um, some files for OTC. And the idea is that there are people at OTC and abstractly, or if you take it on a larger, large scale, all people have particular uh, properties and then if you think about a student and a teacher, they have some similar properties, but some additional properties. And what I mean by that is um, I've created this person class. This person class has some private variables. We call them members, private members and some public members. And at the moment, all the public member is, is a constructor. I have a single constructor that's receiving first name, last name, and then SS, which is social security number in my mind. And the private members are, we have a person ID, which is that social security number. And what I'm thinking is, or what is very prevalent is when you're creating a database or an organization or any collection of things in a database, then everything has a unique ID so we can, we can distinguish one from the other uniquely, which is why you have a social security number or why you have a student number. So I'm going to utilize that in our problem. Uh, in our tutorial here. And then of course we have a first name and a last name. And I only have one constructor, as I said, this doesn't have a constructor with empty parentheses. And I've done that intentionally, I'll uh, show you why. So I'm gonna create a person, I'm gonna call it person one, and just leave it at that for the short run. So I'm creating, trying to stamp out a person without any of these items at this point in time. And I'm gonna compile it, and I'm getting an error message. And the error message is saying, that even though it's not super clear, it's saying, the compiler is telling you, I can't create a person because I can't find a constructor, a constructor that has empty parentheses. There is no constructor with empty parentheses, and I did that intentionally because I don't believe that there is going to exist a person that doesn't have a first name and a last name and some type of unique ID. In other words, your social security number, and I'm not allowing you to stamp out or create a person that doesn't have those three requirements at the time that you create it. And so well, then the requirement is I need to put in a first name and I need to put in a last name and then a unique ID, whatever their social security number, and in my land it's only going to have five numbers and not whatever the real social security 11 or whatever it is. All right, so now I should be able to compile. Nothing comes out because I'm not doing any outputs, but that's okay. All right, so the next thing I want to address then is the private. So uh, purposely in my person class, I have unabled you, disabled you from being able to get at person ID after that person was created. In other words, I want to steal the person's ID, so I want to, that's kind of a, I want to be able to change the person ID. Let's do that. So I'm going to do person one, and I'm going to change the ID to uh, person one, person ID equals, and I'm gonna give them a new number. I don't know why that's relevant here. Maybe it's their grades. Maybe you want to go and maybe that would have been a better example, but that's okay. You get the idea. So now when I run this, I'm getting an error message and the error message is saying person ID is private. So as the creator of this person class, I have made sure that you cannot get to person ID without my giving you access to change it or even read it. I can't even output it right now because it's private. Let me just demonstrate that. All right, so let's just see out it and let's do it that way. Okay, great. So let's just look at it and let's see what we get. All right, same error because person ID is private. So as the creator of the person class, I'm saying you do not currently have access, direct access to the person ID. Fine. Okay, so let's, let me give you an example of where that might be useful. Grades, we just talked about that. You can't just randomly go in and change a grade, but that's another, that's not where I wanted to go with this example. So let me show you where I was headed. I'm gonna copy in some code because it's easier than watching me type and fail here. Um, I'm going to come in here into public because publicly I'm going to give you access to this function. 
So I have to put it in public so that Maine can have access to it. And the idea here is I want you to, if you want to be able to change the last name, I'm going to give you this function that enables you to do that. In other words, just like I saw here, I can't go in and just change last name using that dot notation because it's private. And why have I done that? Well, here is a good reason. Here's a good idea or a thought. I don't know. Anyway, so my point with this function is I want you to be able to change that last name. That's not a problem, but I want to have control of it. In other words, I want to validate that string last name first. So I'm going to utilize this compare method, which is what you need to do with the string. So string compare says I'm going to take one string and I'm going to compare it to whatever is inside these parentheses. If they are the same, then this function is going to return a zero. Okay, So we can't just do what we're used to doing with strings where we're going to say um, if uh, a is equal to b. Unfortunately, that doesn't work here in C-sharp. When we're comparing strings, if we want to see if a is equal to b, then we have to put it in this format. If that would be the a compared to, and then we would put the b in here. And so what that function is going to do then is return, if the two are the same, the strings are the same, it's going to return a zero. Otherwise, it's going to return a one or a negative one, depending on if this, the first variable is higher or, or lower in the ASCII scale or alphabetically speaking, sort of, but more ASCII-letically speaking. Anyway, that was a discussion we had on another day. All I care about for this example is I want to give, I want to have control over you, the user of my class. You can't just change the last name. I want to do some checks on it before you change it. And what I'm checking here is, is the string name that you're trying to change the last name to, is it blank? Did you accidentally send me over a blank string? In which case, these two are going to return a zero because what you sent into my function is an empty string. Empty strings matches empty string. And so we're going to return a false. So this function is returning a true or false and then uh, letting the user know if that name was changed successfully. Uh, if it was, in fact, not an empty string, then go ahead and I will update the last name and to the, whatever you sent over and I will just return a true. And so what that would look like on this other end then is, I'm just going to copy in some code again, control paste. So I'm going to send over, um, I have to utilize that function. So person one, person one, I'm going to go utilize that function that you made publicly to me, Mr. Person class. So, and I'm going to send in um, a name. So let's send in an empty string just to see if this works. All right, so if I'm, I'm going to send you over an empty string, empty string is going to come in here and theoretically, uh, then it's going to return false. If you return false, then this should output, right? So if person last name returns a false, so then this wouldn't be true, then out you must submit a name, okay? Otherwise, if this returns a true, that means that it wasn't an empty string and uh, the name got updated. So let's see that work. So I'm going to compile it, make sure I did it correctly. And then it does say you must submit a name. So if I submitted a name like um, any and uh, Johnson, I don't know why that would be a thing. So name updated, and then we should see that the name got updated. So let's see if that works. Wrong button, and name got updated. All right. So. And in fact, we could even print that out now. So uh, name got updated. Since the name got updated, then it's OK to output it. So we'll output person one dot. Oh, I can't print out the name, can I? Because I don't have access to the last name. So this is now still not valid because you didn't give me access to the last name. And so we're going to write what's called a getter or an accessor, accessor or getter, which is now, since we've made this private, we have to give access to our user, if we want to, some way to get that value. And I do want them to have access to that. 
So what I'm going to do then is, this is obviously not going to work. In fact, I will run it just so we can see that it doesn't work. And it's letting me know, yep, last name is private, so I can't print that out. But I, the creator of this person class, am going to try and give you a way to get at that data. And I think what I'm going to do is create this. So I'm going to create a function that is a getter. And usually when we do this sort of thing where we're giving you access to, we're getting information from our class, we usually call it a getter. And we give it some kind of name that sounds like a getter. So get our, the full name. So I'm giving you the whole thing. I'm not just saying, let's do just a first name or a last name. I'm giving you access to, again, in control of what you're receiving. You don't get just the last name. The only way to get at that data is I will provide you access to the full name. And so now what I'm going to have to do here is if I want to get to the data, I have to use what was provided for me. And that was a function called get full name that I should now be able to see the whole thing. So let's just see what happens. Let me make sure I built it properly. And in fact, name updated. And now you can see Indy Johnson. So this video is designed to try and give you the idea of why would we create private func pri private methods or private methods or function functions or properties or what we call members in the first place and that's because we want to restrict or control access to that data from anything that is importing or using our class and by doing that what i was able to do then is control how you change that last name. I made sure that you didn't change the last name to something in, that was empty in our case. And then I also controlled the access to the data with the getter, which, um, sorry, with a getter, which says you can't just get the last name. If you want the name of this person, you're going to have to get the first and the last name together. So again, it's my being able to control the data or access to the data and that's why we put it in something that's private all right we'll continue on in the next video we'll stamp out some students